Hello, welcome pen friends. Today's video is going to be all about nibs. Fountain pen nibs, replacement nibs, what we can do with them. Let me just explain. Uh, this came up in an email question from a viewer who is relatively new to fountain pens. So it really reminded me of how I felt in the beginning, which has been almost five years ago now. So um, he, the question was, was something like, what would be the advantage of buying replacement nibs for it for the Gen Hao pens? And so I started to think really think about that and how um, how we all vary. And I'm going to try to answer that question from my perspective. But it opened up a lot of other areas that I thought we could explore. Um, but the the quick answer for me, the reason I started getting Goulet nibs for my Gen Hao X750s was because the size choices were so limited. You know, um, if I'm not mistaken, there was either just one size or it was either fine medium or something like that. And I just, I was really wanting to explore broad nibs and stub nibs. So when I started ordering um, the Goulet replacement nibs, that's when I found out how great they were. And uh, that's not the only place you can get them, but that's where I've ordered mine. So that's that's what I can speak about, you know, really with confidence because that's where I've ordered mine. And they are Yowo nibs that are branded for a Goulet to have the pretty little um, emblem on them. But we'll look at that when we go to the desk. Um, I just want to say right up front, I I'm not an expert. All I can talk about it <coughs> really is my own experiences over the past few years. <coughs> Excuse me. And I have so much more to learn and there's so much territory unexplored by me in the uh, area of fountain pen nibs. Like I, I have never had a, a custom ground nib or um, I, I have one unique nib in my collection which is a uh, oblique double broad and that was sent to me by um, a fellow fountain pen enthusiast uh, who shall remain anonymous but and that's a wonderful nib and it kind of like wow it showed me what what's out there a little bit but I still haven't gone down that road really or explored that but I think that there's a lot for especially for newcomers um, newcomers to the hobby and people who are trying to be on a budget there's a lot of um, bandwidth or mileage you can get when you start looking into replacing nibs or having some available and after you get a few you really have tons of options like this is a uh, factory Gen Hao nib off of uh, X450 and so that uh, and that wrote the nib wrote and it was okay but we'll talk about it when we go look at what I have to show you I just don't like feedback and I just like like a really uh, flowy nib so I do work on on my pens so what we'll look at we'll look at my little nib storage unit which tells you more about what isn't that great <laughs> uh, because it's what's not in the garage right it's what you have out in use that's important and then we'll look at my nib smoothing supplies but I'm going to direct you some to the best videos for that because I, I definitely can't do better than what's out there <clears throat> and then we'll look at some of my pens and I'll just discuss you know my feelings about how I swap the nibs and how that's changed and everything so let's go do that but I, I hope this will be useful for you Okay, so we'll start out by looking at my little uh, kit that I put nibs that I'm not currently using into. It's just a Dollar Tree little container. You could use anything. You could use a little tin or ri literally anything, but I like this because it had the sections. But what I noticed right away when I uh, was preparing to do this video is this houses what I'm either not using at all or what I have yet to explore. And there's a reason why these nibs are in here. Um, and that's not to say they're all bad because I'm looking at two really good ones here. I just got these in. This is two of the, the Ahab Conrad fine medium non-flex nibs. And I haven't yet put them on the pen. Well, there's one pen and I have an extra. So I haven't done that yet. And then the reason this Twisby nib unit is here is because I had two Diamond 580s with medium nibs. So this is just what what the uh, broad nib unit came in. So when I swapped it out, I put it in here. And uh, I have one medium nib unit in use, but I'm now using that broad nib unit. So it's here. 
but you can see what happens this is kind of like the garage and if you're not using it this is where it goes so i don't have any lamy nibs and no goulet nibs and that tells you a lot because those are my favorite nibs and i can hardly come up with enough of those um, this is a, another project yet to be done. Um, <laughs> this shows my chickenness and really, really ridiculousness, but I might as well be honest. It's that Twisby broad nib that was um, replaced, and I, I still haven't. The one that came on the pen wasn't quite right, and they made it right, so I just paid for shipping, and, but I still haven't put that in there. And that's just. So these are all the Jen Hao. Um, this is this came on a x450 and and i have tons that came on the x750s so the original question was what would be the advantage so we're going to you know of um, getting our goulet replacement nib for the gen how you know it, it isn't the nib that comes on it is is it not good well they're not bad and they can be smooth and they can be um tuned to your liking which is another whole part of this. But there's a whole world that you can open up for yourself. So let's look at those. I think pretty much this is just a hodgepodge here. Um, oh, these are the flex nibs that come on the Ahabs that I just haven't had much luck with. But I certainly want to know where they are. And then this, I think, this may be, oh no, this was the glass nib replacement. That was the Mormon glass nib replacement. If you didn't want the glass nib, this this is a Jen Hao, so I'm not sure which one that went on. It's too bad I didn't label all of it, but anyway, we better we better move on. Okay, so what I thought we would do is uh, start with the Jen Hao X750s. <clears throat> so uh, for now, we'll move up the rest. This one's inked. I got to be a little more careful. <laughs> okay. So these three are not inked, which will help us, I think, with our, our process. And then this one, this one actually is one that came on the pen. Whoops, and I have it inked up. It looks like it's, it's really eager beaver there. Uh, but we'll, I'll show you that it writes and everything, and there's no problem there. Um, but there is for me, so. Okay, these are the three that are not inked up. Okay, and that has, that's another one with the original... Uh, it looks like an original X450 nib, though, because they usually look gold like that. And then this is a Goulet 1.5. So that is one of my favorites. I just cleaned it out from last month, or last, you know. Actually, the last ink I had in it was the uh, Robert Oster Rose Gold Antiqua, where I was doing just a little mini review to familiarize myself with the ink. And then, uh, last but not least, one of my very favorites is the... Uh, this is a Goulet black nib with a broad nib unit on it. And what I do is um, I, I choose my inks that I want to work with. And then <laughs> I shouldn't have these on here. I should just completely change it. But I think we'll be okay. And then uh, these interchange. So if I decide I want the broad nib... Um, I want the broad nib in the blue pen. No problem. I just switch the whole thing. You know, I don't have to pull it, but I could pull the nibs really easily with my little lobster bands, but I'm just all set. Of course, when I get in there, I'm taking all the caps off to figure out which nib is where because it's kind of a, uh, a thing with me. But say I've got a purple ink, I want to use the 1.5, so I'm all set. But I can't buy um, <laughs> a Jin Hao X750 with a stub nib unless things have changed. And really, I try really hard not to tempt myself by going on eBay and stuff. It happens from time to time. But uh, so this one is not inked up. And it is, uh, you know, a, a factory Jin Hao nib off of a... I, I do like the X450 nibs better that look like this. The ones that are kind of two-toned they i don't know if they have more tipping material or what but they seem to but that's just a generalization you can't make because i purchased it so long ago i really try to be careful to not make so many generalizations because it could be totally different now but when i bought it that's how it was so then this one um i inked it up with graf von Fab faber castile stone gray because i know the ink and i wanted to just see randomly you know, one of these just pulled out of the little box to see how it did, and we'll write with it. Okay, I've got uh, two notebooks, so let me grab them. This is a Rhodia 80 GSM um, graph paper, 
And what I found, let's just go ahead and write with it. I need to be a little closer so you can maybe see better. Okay, I normally don't even have to worry about how I hold it. Ah, oh, I got ink. That is very uncommon. Okay. Don't normally get any ink doing monkey business with these pens, so I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. It would happen, of course, on camera. So right off, I noticed that as I was making that J, and I'll try it again, I'll try it again. See, I'm not happy with that, really, because I know that the regular medium nibs um, don't do that, and I just, I don't like feedback. I don't like, it, it's not that it's horrible. It certainly writes well, and in fact, it may even give you more line variation than a regular nib, but that just shows me, well, this is not what I want. I want to have a nice solid line, and so um, it's, it's not horrible, and, and if I press a little more, still on the upstrokes I'm not happy so I probably would want to smooth that if I was going to go ahead and keep it in here which I certainly could my purpose um really my purpose has been to get into the broad and stub nibs that's the reason why I like to buy the Goulet uh, replacement nibs and we'll look at that too so let's um that makes a really good segue I think into what I use to smooth the nibs with um I use the micro mesh that I get from Goulet and then this uh, I think this is from um, Anderson pens it's a try it's a three level it's got this one the gray one which is the uh, least amount of grit the finest and then it's got uh, the whitest next and then this has the most so you would technically you'd start here but you could see I've only started oh goodness sorry about that I've, I've only used the pink just a little bit and I have used both the white, which is the next uh, finer, and then the finest, which this one is I use all the time. Um, so these are what I use. <clears throat> and I also love to have the loop that I got from Goulet to check the nib first to make sure there's nothing like wrong with it. And that's something that in the videos that I send you to, this has a little light. And so I can really examine, you know, what's going on here. Is there anything stuck in there? Is it crooked? Is it like, are the tines sprung? And there's all kinds of things that you look for first before you start. But then I, I'm not going to make this into a, there goes that video, uh, that uh, talking clock. I'm not going to make it into a nib smoothing video because I really, I love what's already out there. So I'm going to link you to those. So um, the other thing I love besides the two uh, polishing, the micro mesh, which let's see, it's like 12,000, but it's the micro mesh you can find right at Goulet Pens. And I like the little brass shims because um, this is not the one that's used as much. I really have used this a lot because this can open up the tines and help you have a little bit better ink flow. But of course, I've got two, I've cut one so I could use two at a time. That's this is my second phase, I guess. I use this one first. My supplies are getting pretty raggedy here, but uh, that's just how it is. <laughs> okay, so I'll just show you that. Now, I wanted to just kind of move along through pens and just talk about nibs, because that's really what I was interested in, was just getting you um, interested. Um, the Lamy nibs, to me, are the very easiest to work with. They're just so easy to pull off. <clears throat> I love to use... Um, the little lobster bands to pull the nibs off. And I use them with the Gen Hao X750s too. But I just have uh, no problem, you know, pulling them off and switching them. And this pen's not in use, so it has a Lamy medium nib. <laughs> I don't favor the, the medium nibs. I like the fine and the broad nibs the best. <clears throat> and the stub nib, I only like it with one ink combination, so I'm a funny bunny, I guess. But that's another medium nib. That, that showed the two that are not in use have the medium nibs. And then the one that is, the purple one, uh, the Lamy Dark Lilac is inked up with Lamy Dark Lilac with a broad nib. But I, I just absolutely love these pans. And the Vista is around here, but it needs severe cleaning. I, I really went crazy with that. So I, I, I wasn't going to show it. But yeah, I've got to go and re-clean this pan. 
poor thing it's getting old uh, and this one also has a broad nib on it so um, what I noticed was I didn't go as crazy wanting to buy more Lamy's once I started getting the nibs I really liked the best the broad and the fine nibs then I could just switch them around and I could and a pen friend very generously sent me a broad Lamy nib I think that she wasn't going to use and, and maybe didn't favor so now I have two of those and I, I have those in service all the time they're never in the they're never parking in here and <laughs> they're always in a pen so <clears throat> so that's if you happen to get along really good with the Lamy grip you're going to really enjoy nib, swa nib, <laughs> nib swapping and you probably already do and it, this is just you know silly but but then let's move along and just look at a few of my other pens so I can just talk about the subject. Um, this is my Serendipity. It, it takes a number six nib, uh, any number six standard nib, and it has a fountain pen nib and feed and then a little tiny reservoir inside. And all you do is just, I've already lost it. You just pull this out and it's easy for cleaning and putting back together, but it has just a tiny little area there you can write a lot with this but this is so neat because I could put any of my number six nibs this happens to be a medium and I'm sure I know why because the broad ones are always on my pens I just you know if I want to write with the serendipity with a broad nib right now I've got to go looking and see what I could sacrifice basically that that just means I haven't ordered what I should order which is one dedicated for this one but that's okay because checking out a new ink, I, I, I'm fine with using a medium nib. <clears throat> so that's what's on it right now. A nice Goulet nib. And then this is one of my favorite pens in one of my favorite sleeves, a rickshaw sleeve. Um, this is a, the little Moon Man Mini in the swirl. And I have a Goulet number no. 5 nib in the broad. And it's just, it transformed the pen. And th what's neat about this is um, the nibs that come on these are f fantastic. There's, you know, there might have been just a tiny bit too much feedback for me, but I love the fine nib that comes on it. So I was really, really wondering, am I going to like this? But yes, it was well worth it to me to, uh, you know, you, I couldn't order it with a broad nib. So that was the only way I could set myself up like that because this is what it comes on it. And it is a fine nib and they're not bad really in my opinion I'm sure that I use just a, a touch of the most um, fine micro mesh with it I'm sure I did that but it didn't take much at all and I am somebody who just doesn't like feedback and not everybody feels that way so <clears throat> okay so next is another pen that just came in to me from a, a generous pen friend and it is a pen bbs 309 i'd never had one and when i opened it up i was even more surprised because uh, the pen friend left a nemesine 0.8 stub nib on it and it's a beautiful nib let's get the get the paper back i've been really enjoying this um so this is pen BBS. It's even a uh, finer, just a little bit finer than a Lamy 1.1. Um, in my opinion, that's what it looks like anyway. It, it may come close to that, but it's just beautiful. I love it. And I have the uh, KWZ. Whoops, I didn't even put the pen. It's a 309. With a 0 0.8 Nemesine. I hope I spell that right. <clears throat> But it's got KWZ Monarch. There was just something about the the cap that made me think of the Monarch, even though it's not really orange. It's kind of a... It just made me think of the orange ink, and I thought, why not? So this is an example, too, of where I'm trying something brand new to me, but any number six nib could go here. So it just makes it so versatile. Okay, and next up is a pen that... I wouldn't have kept if I hadn't been able to uh, change the nib. It's my uh, Conklin Duragraph Purple Nights. Came with a medium Conklin nib that I just didn't like. And this is a medium Goulet nib that has solved the, you know, it saved the day. So <laughs> the Conklin nib, I worked and worked and worked on it. 
but there was something about every time I saw it after that, I just didn't want to write with it. So I, I wasn't happy even after smoothing it. <clears throat> but this just took away the problem. <clears throat> Duragraph, okay, <laughs> with a medium goulet. So this is part of my lineup for this February 2021. But I just, I really like it. And I, I haven't had any more problems. At first I thought, well, maybe it's something to do with the feed too. But no, everything has been fine. This is Diatrimenus um, Alexander Hamilton. Oh, my writing is awful and I'm being rushed. I don't mean to be so rushed. But that's just a case where I was just thrilled once I got a nib on it I liked. Uh, let me see what else we got here. We've already messed with that one and that one. Okay, so the Twisby Diamond 580, I'm just beginning to experiment with. So the nib unit that was on it is now in the uh, <clears throat> safekeeping here. It was this one, the medium nib. And I just wanted to try Twisby Diamond 580 with a broad nib and then a stub nib was given to me. So I switch them all around. You could see that. <laughs> This could easily get very confusing, but <clears throat> this is another case where I don't feel that urgency to get any more because I now have the medium, broad, and stub nib experience, and I've got one of these that's a, a clear demonstrator. So it, to me, it doesn't matter what ink color I put in that one, but I am kind of matchy about <laughs> the pens. So this one has the, the uh, I'm probably going to say it wrong. I think this is the Levenger ink. Yeah, this is the Levenger ink, and I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, this is a great experience. But you see, that kept me from thinking that I had to have a whole nother pen when I did purchase the broad nib unit, and this one's been swapped off of the purple one. And of course, if you've got one of these pens, you know that they're expensive. And so a nib unit is about $25, so you're not looking at the same thing. And, and that's not to say that I would never again be tempted by, by another Twisby Diamond 580. It happens. It happens all the time, but it's going to be more so with the Ecos because, let me get one of those out. <clears throat> Might as well get that one that I've, <laughs> I should change. Okay, my Twisbys have a new home. It's inside that uh, hub pen company. It's a 24 pen case. I don't, I don't yet have 24 Twisbys, but I can see that happening easily because I think I have 16 already. But with these, with the Twisby Ecos, I personally am not comfortable pulling the nib and feed because I had a bad experience with a little Jen Hao pen that I really loved, and I ended up um, squashing the feed, the feed, the fins. So. Because of that, I've been a big chicken, and people have told me what to do, and one day I think I'll probably get the nerve to do it. I see people pull it constantly. I've got one pen friend that is just fearless and is constantly pulling them off and, and isn't ruining their pens. So, But that's just me. So I can see where this is a different thought process. If a beautiful new color like for instance, rose gold smoke <laughs> comes out, then it's even more tempting even if I already have the clear, uh, you know, pen or I have another Twisby Eco. It's, it's just that much more tempting because I don't want to fiddle around with switching nibs. And it's even tempting to get like, I have a purple stub and I'd, I'd like a purple with the medium. So those are the kinds of things that I try to set up little roadblocks and preventions for myself so that I don't overspend. And you know, it's a real thing, but <laughs> I know I'm ridiculous. Let's see, let's get out a couple more pens. I, I can't go too much longer because it'll be too long, but just a little bit anyway, because I really enjoy thinking and talking about this. I, I think this is gonna do it pretty much, except for one thing. One more would be the little Caveco. So this is the Moonman M600S that I just love. And it's now got a permanent pairing with this nib, which is a, a broad Yoho nib that came from Pensive Pens in uh, Australia. And it came on the original Serendipity, but there's just something about the combination 
of uh, how this writes in this pen that it's it's permanently paired now and I'm not going to move it. So I've just been so thrilled with that. Um, and I think I did with the other, this was an anniversary gift and this one was a gift from a pen friend for my birthday Christmas, I think it was. But this, I have also done a switcheroo, but this is not a permanent combination. This is my only Goulet 1.1 stub and I enjoyed it for what I last wrote with it. Um, it's not the stub that I use the most though. I really favor the... Uh, 1.5 because it's a juicier whoops it's not on there anymore because i just changed it didn't i no telling where it is Aha, it'll be behind door number three okay yeah here it is it's now on the purple and i think of it as being on the blue so this is my favorite goulet stub it's the 1.5 it's super juicy and it shows off ink in a, in a really incredible way so these are the Gen Hao 159s. I, I like these and I like the X750s, but I've kind of abandoned the 450s for right now. But that's going to that's gonna come around too when I get more time. Oh, look what I've got on there. I've got that Conklin nib on there. Oh, that's an insult almost to that pen, but I, I don't know. Must be I thought I was going to try it and I didn't have another Goulet nib, so that's what happens. And then on here, it's a, a stock nib, a, a Jin Hao nib. Um, I do need, just, or need, that's not the right word. I plan to get a couple more um, number six nibs. And then this is the final, this is something that just this week a viewer told me that you could get, um, if I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken because now I'm thinking, well, if if I'm thinking of it right, that you could get the little replacement Caveco nibs over on Jet Pens, but I'll have to look into that too again because now I'm wondering. And this has the medium nib that came on it, but I, I truly would like to put a broad nib on there, so that'd be cool. Um, once I get something seated and I really like it, like uh, this one, the uh, Little Moon Man, I don't plan to take that off because it's a little tricky to get them off. So... I'm so, so happy with that nib. I'm not going to be pulling and replacing that. It's just perfect and it writes so good. I'm going to leave it be. But I think this is what I wanted to tell you. But I, I also know that you could, and many of you could teach me way more than I already know. And I learned something every day in the comments. But it's just a lot of fun. It can open up the hobby and make your pens more versatile when you start going down the road of nibs. And I've got a lot further to go. There are things in the back of my mind that I'd like to try. <coughs> there are things that I hear about that I don't even really know what they are. You know, truthfully, like architect grind. I don't know what that's going to do. But that just means I need to sit down and learn. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that's my signal to go. All the windows are open and my allergies are kicked right up. So something's going on. I hope this was helpful to you in some way. Um, like I said, if you're either on a budget or you're new to the hobby, this could really open up some ideas for you that you could uh, start to get more mileage out of a single pen. Um, I don't know of any of my pens that have gotten more mileage than this Lamy Vista. Uh, and poor thing, I didn't. I need to clean it. Anyway, I'm going to go now, and I'd love to hear in the comments anything that you'd like to talk about um, about nibs because it's just incredible the wealth of knowledge we have collectively. And I I'm just still very much just beginning to explore in the hobby. And, and sometimes it seems like I, I feel like I'm slow or I'm the last one, <laughs> you know, to try something. But it, it's just been a lot of fun whenever I did get brave enough to try the new things. So I'll see you next time. Bye for now.